Hello everyone. In this video we will see what type of math is required to become an investment banker. And I welcome you to the question answer channel. Thanks to Azam Qureshi, Pedro Miranda and Rafael Sarandesis for sharing their answers with us. We'll start with Azam Qureshi's first answer. What is 12.5% of 64? Do it in your head right now. If you got it within 5 seconds, you have way beyond what it takes. If you got it between 5 and 30 seconds, you'll be fine. If you got it between 30 and 60 seconds, you should be okay but you need to brush up. If you took 60 seconds to 5 minutes you'll struggle on the number side, but there will be plenty of roles for you. If you took over 5 minutes, forget it. You don't need calculus, matrices, complex numbers, etc. You need to be comfortable, ideally damn comfortable, with the basics. What do you think? We will continue with Pedro Miranda's answer. You don't need any esoteric math knowledge as Asim Qureshi points out. But you need perfect number pitch, trademark. What the hell is that? It is the mathematical equivalent of absolute pitch, Wikipedia. In music, that means that numbers out of place bother you to the point that drive you crazy. Just like when you listen to a kid playing the piano and when s, he hits the wrong note it hurts your ears. Let me explain how it happens. It is 11 p.m. and you are sipping espresso number 11 for that day. You see on a presentation that McDonald's had $12 billion in earnings last year. That would go by the untrained person because MCD is a very large company and $12 billion is a very large number. But it immediately catches your attention. That number jumps out of the page. Because you know that large fast food companies trade at about 25 earnings and that would mean that McDonald's has a $300 billion market cap. But you know ExxonMobil is a $300 billion company and there is no way that MCD is larger than XOM. That $12 billion is wrong. All this happens in your head in less than 30 seconds. You look up the correct number, it is about $5 billion, fix the presentation and continue. Perfect number pitch allows you to quickly spot mistakes even if you had no sleep in the last 30 hours. What do you think? We will continue with Rafael Sarandiz's answer. I got to Goldman Sachs with very poor math skills, so I am a living example that you can learn the math you need to perform in banking. Let me explain. I pursued a humanistic track in high school and then law plus business in college, where I struggled with anything to do with econometrics, financial maths, statistics. My best grades were in law school, and before that in history, and philosophy, English and Spanish. That is how, in 2005, I joined the GSFX sales desk. Go figure. My mom thought I would be fired only after a few days, so she decided not to unpack the room at home just in case. Not only I was not a star at maths, but my attention skills were poor. No way you will make it. She kept saying, yup, she will always be my best fan. At the beginning I understood that I would have to do something if I wanted to last at GS. My screens were covered with post-its and so was my floor, as the post-its insisted on dropping from the screen. My calculator was my single most precious property in the whole world. I decided I would not get fired on the back of my default weaknesses. My job required that I performed quick mental calculations on a daily basis. I needed to know what three basis points of whatever amount was, or how much 20 United States dollars pips worth on a 34.5 meters year FX trade would be in the few seconds between getting the order from the client and closing the deal. So I built matrices. I learned how to calculate decimals as a system, and then to approach to the best result with an 80-20ths philosophy. The fact is, I do have an excellent memory, so it all worked out and now I am relatively good at mental calculations. As for my bad attention skills, I learned to listen effectively and use a number of apps that help me keep everything under control. Conclusion. It did not matter to me and it should not matter to you how good you were at maths. I just was not going to accept my structural weaknesses to decide if I could work at GS or not. That was my decision. So next time you feel like you don't have the necessary skills, think again. Ask yourself, what if I did have the skills, or a way to get them? How could I do that? Explore the options and go for it. It is your decision to let those things you are not good at take you down. Nobody else's. This is the end of the video. Thank you for staying until the end. I hope the video has you more. If so you can subscribe and activate the bell to miss any video. Also remember to leave a like. We are coming to the end of this video. Share your views on this question in the comments. See you next time.